Today I want to talk about my electric longboard which I built. I've been wanting to build one for two and a half years, probably ever since I saw one. And I had one false start and I actually managed to build it. And I wanted to talk about some stuff I learned along the way, what, what went well, what didn't go so well. So let's begin. So the first, first thing I learned is about the deck. I tried it on a shorter deck before because I'd seen the, the bolt. A longer board is better. So, and this board is really nice for the electric longboard because when you're on an electric longboard and you stand, you want your feet wide apart because it can tend to sometimes break when you're not expecting it. Um, it can accelerate when you're not expecting it. And if your feet are wider apart, uh, you're more stable. It gives a better ride than a skateboard. Although it's a drop through deck, I mounted a top mount because you want to get clearance underneath the board for the motor. Can build anything yourself if you're good enough but if you're a normal hack like me you really should buy this the screw on mounts are the better ones because you can put them on different trucks it's also very important when you get a mount that the mount is adjustable so that you can adjust the tension of your belt this belt's a little bit loose actually you really want a good solid thick aluminium mount so in terms of belts and these gears you want to go for HTD. You don't want to get XL or anything else like that. HTD is the one that's made for transferring power. This is a 9mm wide belt. If I could choose again, I would go wider. I think there's a 12mm belt as well. It's just going to be stronger. In terms of motor, you should go for the lowest kilovolt motor you can get. So this one is a 195 kilovolt motor. It's uh, one of the cheaper ones available on Hobby King, but it's serving me well. The low kilovolt motor, you get less speed, but more torque. More torque means more power. It means it accelerates well. This thing accelerates very well. Like It'll throw me off if I just pull the trigger. Speed you get through basically having a high voltage here. The higher the voltage, the faster this will turn. You gear it actually down a bit, so you even get more torque. So I've got 36 teeth, and I've got 15 teeth on the front. So that it's like a gearing of, it gears it down by approximately half. The next thing is like the housing. I sort of underestimated this and thought you could just strap some batteries to the bottom of the board. But it would be a dangerous thing to do because the, the batteries I'm using are lithium polymer batteries, LiPo's. Very, very sensitive to damage. If a stone hits them, if they get squashed from any angle, you could end up with a fire. Seriously, these things burn and there is a house that burnt down not far away from here because of batteries. Um, so I ended up using a carbon vinyl coating on a Tupperware container, which luckily fit my purposes. And then I also noticed that the motor was taking some strain and taking some damage from stones flying up. And so I mounted this little protection here. Stones typically come from the front of the board and hit here before they hit the motor now. The housing should be able to uh, offer a switch so you can easily switch it on and off. So that's off now. I've got my charging outlet coming out here and the balancer. So I don't have to always unscrew here. So let's look inside the housing. Here we've got my battery. This is a Zippy LiPo. It's uh, 6S, which means it has six cells. It has a uh, five amp hour rate. So you could run it at uh, five amps for an hour. I find with normal cruising, yeah, I can get about an hour and like cruising for about an hour around flatlands depends how much you use it But you need a pretty expensive charger to, to charge them. So it's quite a complicated piece of machinery I paid almost 200 bucks for mine. I'm not a big fan of lipos anymore I, I find them too complicated and too dangerous and if I were to build this setup again I would go for uh, lithium-ion batteries with a battery management system. The one thing you don't want is these high batteries I really don't like it that this thing is so high and it can drag on the ground should have rather gone for two 3S uh, batteries and it would have been flatter. So moving on to the heart of the longboard I would say is the electronic speed control. Uh, this ESC is from Hobby King. It's a boat. It's made for boats. It's actually got water cooling through here which I'm not using. I actually cut off the, the jets here. I must say it's serving me really well. It it's, doesn't break at all so you can't use it to come do, go down a hill. Um, but it's not getting hot and I'm really happy with the acceleration. 
speed is 30 k's an hour which is more than enough for me i'm very happy with this thing for its price so it was about 40 50 bucks or something but for a first build you could definitely go with this setup here the battery the controller the motor the electronics for probably around 100 120 bucks you'd be you'd be okay i paid 70 bucks for the mount and the sprocket another 10 or so bucks for the sprocket the wheels i got second hand for 35 bucks the board i built myself the trucks i got for 40 bucks so we're around uh, probably around 400 450 bucks for the board and then as i say 200 bucks for the charger which was pretty darn expensive so one final thing which i put on last night which is a really good idea if you want to protect your batteries is a voltmeter obviously you could have like a a voltage alarm or a uh, battery management system which warns you about low battery this is just really for me to keep an eye on the volts uh, unfortunately it's not so readable in the sun at the moment i'm on 24.8 that's pretty good um, when you get down to about 22.8 uh, you're at about uh, two-thirds 66 percent power or energy and when you get down to 20 you should actually stop like if you get anywhere near 20 under 21 i would i would stop so wheels, I'm using orangutan Kegel 83As, the purple ones which Patrick Switzer rides in races, very happy with them. If I had my choice I'd go for the orange, the softer ones. Because um, mostly you're going to be riding on rough roads and you want something a bit softer. If I had my wish I would go for even bigger wheels. I don't know why, but on an electric longboard, you, you basically need bigger wheels. So acceleration would be smoother, you'd probably get a bit more top speed if you had 100 millimeter wheels.